This is the beginning of our second unit this year, Unit 2, uh, The Foundations of Our Constitutional Government. Uh, and today we begin with Objective 2A, the five fundamental principles of government. The first is what we call consent of the governed. And it's the idea that the people are the source of any and all governmental power in this country. Now, we have to go back and think, why is this principle important when we talk about people having the power? Now, you remember that during the Revolutionary War, the main reason we broke away is because we felt like we were not giving our, given our full rights from England. So what this principle of government does, it protects people from a powerful and hungry government. It allows people to have the ultimate say in the direction of our country. We, the citizens, have a right to express our views, that's protected by the First Amendment and the Bill of Rights, to tell our government in what direction we want our country to go. The best way we do this is every four years, we elect a president and vice president, or re-elect them, depending on where we want the direction of our country to go. Other ways we can show our consent is by speaking out, protesting, writing to the newspapers, petitioning, all rights guaranteed by your first amendment, okay? All those. So our first amendment gives us, the citizens, the right to basically show our consent in where we want our country to go. So, we the people, look at the visual, we, all these people, yes, I vote, I vote, I vote, I vote, I vote. All these people choose in the direction, based off our elections, what direction we want our country to go. The next one is what we call a limited government. This is the idea that the government only can go so far in its actions. The government cannot abuse our fundamental liberties, which are listed in the Bill of Rights in our Constitution. Our government is not all-powerful. It may only do things people have given it the right to do. Similar to consent, the idea that people give the permission of government to do things, but this is the idea that you know the government only can go so far. You have to remember from our Revolutionary War experience, taxes weren't imposed on colonists, on things like stamps, on things like tea, uh, all that good stuff. We didn't have representation in Parliament. And of course, things like we had to quarter troops. We had no right to tell an English soldier to get out of our house. We had to feed them. Okay, so the founders wanted a system of what we call checks and balances, which we'll learn about later this year. The idea that we, the people, would serve as the ultimate check on our government. Okay? And so that is the idea of three separate branches, which we'll learn about later, legislative, judicial, and executive. And we, the people, again, elect our members of Congress. We elect our president. And then, technically, our elected officials are the ones who determine who the nine Supreme Court justices are. Another one, the third, is what we call rule of law, self-explanatory. Even though even those people in government are supposed to be ruled by the law. And a lot of times you hear about corruption and stuff like that, lawmakers being arrested, and that is the idea of rule of law. Just because you are a member of our government does not mean you are above the law. Everyone is equal in the eyes of the law. All the people representing us are bound by the same laws that govern us. The president is not viewed as a king. Remember when we were in uh, under colonial rule, the king who was given the divine right based off blood rights to be the leader of England was also the leader of us. We really didn't have any type of control over that. We have what we call the power of impeachment. Two presidents have been impeached by Congress, Johnson, Andrew Johnson, and William Jefferson Clinton, Bill Clinton. They were not removed, but they were impeached. Basically a slap saying, you broke the law. And again, the idea of equality, the scales of justice, as you see, are supposed to be equal. No matter who you are, things are supposed to be equal in the eyes of the law. Equality. Of course, we all know that it took many years for this principle to be true, and it took some additional amendments, like the 13th, which abolished slavery, the 19th, that granted women the right to vote, but that has helped make our country a more level playing field. Democracy. A democracy, as you've learned probably before, and a democracy is a system of government where the people ultimately rule. 
This is our fourth principle of government. The United States is an example of a democracy, not a pure democracy, but a representative democracy. So the idea again, we the people rule in a democracy, our government gets the power from the people. If the people do not like the direction of government, we have the ultimate say and we can vote them out of office. Your final principle of government, the fifth, is a representative government. And this is why we're not a pure democracy, because in a pure democracy, the people would vote on every referendum and issue in this country. It happens in smaller nations, I believe, like Switzerland and Europe, where any type of governmental decision, all citizens vote on it. Now, in our country, we can barely get 50% of the voting age population to come out for president. So you can imagine why a pure democracy would not work for an expansive nation like the United States. Instead, we have a representative democracy where we elect people to serve on our behalf and vote in Congress based off the wishes of the people. If the people feel that that member of Congress has violated their trust, every two years, a member of House is up for re-election. Every six years, a senator is up for re-election. And again, system of government. If we feel the government is broken, again, we can change that direction in a representative government. So the people, the represented Billy, and a whole bunch of other people vote for a congressman to vote on our behalf. If that Congress member votes on things that we don't like, we can, in two years, vote them out and pick the opponent. Okay? Wonderful drawings here. So again, your five principles of government, consent to the governed, the idea that people give the government permission to do what it wants, limited government, that even elected officials must obey the law, rule of law, the idea that all people are bound by the law, democracy, a government where the people rule, and a representative government where we the people elect those to represent us in our Congress. If we don't like the way it's going, we can vote them out of office. Okay? So, again, five fundamental principles. I hope you understood Objective 2A, the five...